is June 15th, 2017. And I have with me, I have with me Sakina, hey, Eva, Ian, Alicia, and Ted. Hello, everybody. Uh, today is the second time I do the non-channeling webinars and uh, I will speak for myself. It doesn't mean that I've, I'm not intending to channel, but I will pretend that it's me speaking. So if, if somebody comes through that, um, you know, I will still speak for myself. And I don't really know what to speak about, but I have some vague ideas. Um, I, I, I expected the download, but I didn't get many downloads. I was asking for them, but I didn't get many. I get like random few, few pieces here and there. Um, let me ask first, maybe my uh, dear audience, do, do you guys have any any questions or topics we want to discuss? <laughs> if you want, you can type it. Let, let me see if there is anything typed. No, there is nothing. Can't hear. I think oh, okay. I could. I That's the old one, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. I will share my experiences. Hold on. I will just fix that. Hey, my screen squished. Do you have to know who you're going to be channeling tonight? No channeling tonight. Tonight, I will speak. I will channel Max Rempel myself <laughs> with open eyes. Uh, at least partly. There was something I wanted to ask Yogananda, but I don't need to ask Yogananda about it. Do you remember when he talked about vegetarian, what he said? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I had to listen twice to kind of to his point of view. And I've heard something like this before, but much I understand his point of view and what he's saying. He, the United States agriculture, animal agriculture, is so horrifying, so cruel, that mm -hmm. I wonder if what Yogananda said, where did you go? <laughs> I'm coming, I'm coming back, I just needed one up. I wonder if what Yogananda said about like cows agreeing to it, well I know that cows cry you know, they go through so much horrifying suffering in this country I don't mean traditional agriculture, I mean factory farming um, agriculture in this country, but I, I can see how what Yogananda said applies to American factory farming do you hear my point? Yeah, yeah. Because it's... But it's such a cruelty happening here. I just can't justify it. I don't think that it's actually for any, any good for humanity. Not, of course, not animals, but not humanity. It's just too cruel to, to for me to see any benefit for anybody. Okay, so um, cruel agriculture. I guess I will speak for Max. And um, cruel um, uh, treatment of animals. You know, if you cross the, the 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 border to Mexico, like it's half an hour drive from here, you'll find that there is cruelty to animals much bigger, like to to dogs. And when I fly to Russia, we have a friends who are doing uh, uh, the work with 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 dogs and cats. They do how do you call it um, humanitarian work. They uh, have a, a place where they keep the animals and neuter them and take care of them and um, fi find the, the owner. So it's kind of, you know, the, the word for that, some kind of 
it's like loli loli lollipop farm in, in Russia. And for Russia, it's very new, because in Russia, uh, there is uh, still that treatment of dogs as lower animals is very strong. And um, the whole literature, the whole culture is like treating someone like a dog, or they say, you know, dogs are of lower status. I understand. We have a little bit the same in Poland. I'm from Poland. Right. So it's... Uh, it's all relative. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at the recent history. Even like 50 years ago, the treatment of children was was pretty bad. There was spanking. There was abuse. There was um, uh, the value of life was very low. The jokes were like really kind of I will eat you. And I realized it's uh, it's uh, it's sort of it, at that time it wasn't real, but uh some little more time ago like 100 and 150 times ago it was it was real so so uh, are, you, are you talking more about the industrialized factory farming and as you had mentioned as in the united states and the numbers of cattle that are slaughtered each year that turns out to be in the hundreds of millions and if not it will be built supporting the population just not of the US but of the world and which is a rate that is unsustainable given the population growth and so you have these mass complexes of hundreds of thousands if not billions of cattle annually being slaughtered raised and slaughtered for the sole purpose of, of supplying beef to the pop to the world's population and in addition to that, you also have the environmental impact of like all of the methane gas that's produced that, you know, is a significant contributor to global warming because it's 14 times more potent than CO2. Is that just from my own understanding, is that kind of along the lines as what you were getting at? Yeah, we both speak about that. Yes. There was a discussion with Yogananda saying, you know, do you have to be vegetarian? And Yogananda said that, like, calibrate yourself. For different state of minds, different different state of soul, you might need some of meat. And um, if, if you have to work in mainstream environment, basically you have to eat what they eat. If you have to travel, you you have to eat what, what, what you can get. Because, yes, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, just um, about that, too. So we're not supposed to eat, well, for most of us, we're not supposed to eat animals because they have feelings and they have a brain. But the latest research done on plants says the same thing. So I just don't understand. I've thought about this a lot. Like, how does that work in? Do, do you know what I'm talking about, Max? Have you heard that? Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So it's Good the point. same thing if you eat salad or if you eat a, I don't know. Help me. Help me out. <laughs> All right. So if, if, if plants... If plants are also intelligent, why 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 do we make a preference and discriminate animals against yeah. plants or plants against because animals? You also have the dichotomy of of you know just the the cycle of life and nature and the animals eating each other. Right. Bashar says that we have predators because we are predators, not the other way around. From uh, Bashar's point of view. Uh, the humanity as um, a collective consciousness chooses a game of war and um, killing each other. It's like the whole planet is immersed in that sort of drama. So the ultimate answer, the ultimate understanding is that it is a free choice of the human collective, not only on the level of uh, brainwashed modern egos and physical minds, but also on the level of collective consciousness on the spirit side. We have a lot of early stage spirits, undeveloped spirit souls, who are still playing the drama of first three chakras. First chakra survival, second chakra uh, just learning how to communicate on a very primitive level, and the third chakra is war, dominance, uh, hierarchy. So, You're looking at the movies, looking at what people do with their free time, they 
continue to prefer being interested in more rough, more uh, lower level, more undeveloped uh, lessons rather than on uh, high, higher spiritual or cultural lessons. It is, you can clearly see like people just choose, you give them the choice to do something highly vibrational or lower vibrational and the majority just naturally chooses lower vibrational. We just can ask them what what are their criteria? Like for us, the criterion is could be does it help enlightenment? Does it help awakening? Does it help the spirit? Does it help God? Does it help uh, love and uh, and awakening and becoming the members of galaxy? For us, it's kind of given. It's our values and. Uh, uh, I, I know a lot of nice people, nice, really nice, not, not, not evil people. For some of them, the higher priority is pleasure. Like for me, pleasure is sinful. Like if, if I'm living for pleasure, it's, it's a waste of time, waste of resources, waste. I cannot justify me driving the car if I live for pleasure. Because car destroys the environment, so if I drive a car, I have to be in exchange give, giving something positive, like these webinars, right? But for others, you know, was it pleasant for you? They ask you, was it, you know, did you get, was it pleasant? Did you, did you have fun? You know, for me, fun is also sinful, right? <laughs> so for some people, fun, for some people, pleasure, for some people, power, power, for some people, just experience. Some people live for experience, but they kind of are seekers of, uh, say, extreme experiences like skydiving and uh, yeah. Adrenaline experiences. adrenaline experiences but it's not it's not that they are doing wrong choices it is the level of the structure of their spirit body if they are here for the first incarnations maybe they are aliens it's okay to develop the first chakras to do the grounding if they are new souls it's okay to be to be conservative to be uh, going with uh, with the um, with the crowd being mainstream. Being mainstream is not a sin if, if that's the design of their soul. I mean, and if they are finally reaching the third chakra lessons, it is it corresponds to the warrior caste caste of Hindus. That's that's what they do. They play power games, they you know, they learn how to be how to motivate other people, how to dominate other people but also with a warrior caste there is also the sense of duty for me the idea of being a, pa a patriot and having duty to their state is uh, has always been something fake i couldn't really associate myself with it. i'm i'm a patriot of maybe galaxy or maybe uh, enlightened beings i'm a patriot of um, fourth dimension, fifth dimension, but uh, associate myself, limit myself to the geographical location and to the government, which, you know, which is limited also. For me, it was kind of strange, so I never associated myself with that, or at least very little. But for them, it is a step up from not being loyal to anyone, just from being pure ego, working for, the, for yourself for the pleasure, to servicing others. So, for them, the word service, like military service, is real service. I recently met a nice um, um, ex-military who is a charming reptilian type of light worker. And he is pure service. He, he is a pure service. He is a rep clearly reptilian vibe, but, but he is all into service and all in reptilian culture values. So, so I, I really admired him. It was my first experience where it was a beautiful expression of service. So th there is nothing wrong to be on the third chakra level, but the, the main problem is only from a global perspective that the humanity becomes suicidal. And it's not only become suicidal, it is um, practically possible. It is practically possible for humanity to commit that suicide. Since we got nuclear energy, now it's it's any any time it is possible. And now, okay, what it was 60 years ago we got nuclear energy, and now we got all all, all other sorts of 
um, weaponry and uh, self-destruction tools. So that is worrying. Coming back to the idea of of plants versus animals, eating plants versus eating animals. I'm say what I was trying to say was that we are making huge progress. We may be behind the plan, behind the curve, but just looking at 30 years ago, 50 years ago, and 100 years ago, uh, America is making huge progress. And the fact that now more people are at least can comprehend that eating animals could be ethically not right is already great because because in the past it was just beyond uh, it was beyond the understanding people just couldn't get it so so you know I just see that Russia China and you know the, the countries I visit Russia China and I'm looking at now at Mexicans they they are behind they are behind in terms of cruelty for them that cruelty is still for many people it is still fun like I grew up in a situation you know I read in the books and I was scared by it's Mark Twain about uh, Huckleberry Finn and Tom Sawyer about how they treated cats pretty very na nastily it was kind of normal in the culture at that time and then I met the same in Russia it was just you know boys would uh, would uh, sadistically harm cats for or frogs just for fun. It was like ne next to me. It was in a, in, a, in a Boy Scout camp in Russia. So, so in America it becomes kind of really cruel, and people would uh, like the average people would think about that as very very cruel. In Russia it was a norm, and now when I'm visiting Russia, it's still still I can see that America is is uh, you know. So, so, so made made some um, uh, progress. Yeah, it's is ahead of ahead of the at least some some but other countries. With consciousness, because on one hand, yes, they do the pet kind of animals much nicer than in uh, like Russia or Poland, right? Right. While you see, I'm talking specifically about cows because. Right. Uh, because Yogananda talked about cows as being, but at the same time, what's happening in the United States, how cows are treated, is, is, is so horrifying. That's that's what I'm specifically referring. Right. So it really depends on perspective. On one pers from one perspective, uh, yes, it is terrible. From some other outsider perspective, if you look from the uh, point of view of a creator being, like timeless perspective, you can see that it's all a game. Um, for me, it was I, I kind of got on that, at that point uh, some time ago when I was reading the biography of uh, Mahatma Gandhi. So, what was what Gandhi was doing? It was uh, he was taking risks himself, himself, he could have been killed many times, but also he led a movement where he was responsible for much of um, danger and some many deaths of, of his followers. Uh, they, they, uh, they just, they, I mean, self-sacrifice was, was the main idea of, of his movement for India, for liberation of India. And, um, he also had to deal with that, and as I understand, he could only do the, what he did because he realized it's all an illusion. The death is illusion. The, the suffering is 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 permitted by the divine design of of that planet. So, basically, what I'm saying is, uh, yes, from the human perspective here, it is terrible, but it is a lesson. It is a game. It is a drama, and there are multiple alien cultures donated, as I understand, donated their essence. So some uh, culture of cows and bulls uh, somewhere where they are, say, maybe humanoid or some other higher development creatures, maybe higher dimensional creatures, 
they allow their essence to land here and that was their gift to us to uh, of their of their essence and their essence is trust again it, it Bashar also alluded to that trust acceptance and uh, life through nonviolence basically largely through nonviolence I think you hit a big part when you had mentioned I mean I think you hit it on the head when you mentioned illusion and through you know many spiritual teachings this is all an illusion and just like you had also mentioned uh, you know death is an illusion in and of itself uh, just as is 90% of all suffering is within the minds of each individual um, so I think you know if you want to get really complicated with it and and you look at it from uh, the perspective of illusion it mm -hmm. not only complicates matters it, it really kind of makes it uh -huh. kind of what I would say kind of non-existent if you will mm -hmm. yeah I just a second uh, what I wanted to add yes yes illusion yes um, when you eat a chicken you become a chicken when you eat a cow you become a cow so it's all kind of there is that essence is transmitted when you in, in uh, Jewish and Islamic faith there is a special method of killing uh, animals so they don't suffer it's called kosher for jews and um, remind me the word for, for there is a word for islamic uh, they they interchange so the jews are allowed to eat islamic kosher kosher food and um, the other way around uh, so when you eat animals which died without suffering you don't uh, take on yourself that suffering and when you eat uh, the the animals which are killed uh, in modern ways, then um, then you take on yourself and you kind of live the life which is uh, more more saturated with that. So you take some of the karma on yourself. So the humanity by continuing that uh, in inhumane treatment of animals takes on yourself more of the of that drama and also uh, same with plants same, same with, with other kinds of animals right and um, also the computer games I you know I, I see what 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 teenagers are playing and some sometimes it's not only teenagers it would be like any ages would play and the games um, it was interesting how it was in with Minecraft they uh, started the minecraft as completely peaceful game it was it was very uh, uh, more like engineering and uh, i guess it started with survival you have to survive so it's first chakra lessons but gradually they brought there the the fight the competition the uh team player team 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 play and uh, fight between groups of people so they brought the war there and what's interesting, they brought there the um, underworld and um, and heaven. Uh, nobody was interested in, and what was most interesting, nobody was interested in playing in heaven. They all went to the underworld. They were experiencing the dark side of the world. And uh, I think maybe the girls only played the kind of girlish form of Minecraft where it was all uh, flowers and strawberries. Um, but... Uh, there, there are much more developed games which are pure pure fight and on one hand it is nice that uh, the souls that are at that level of development that they can express themselves and learn without actually killing people they just do it in the, in the computer games But on the other hand, they create um, collective collective desire, which I think affects the, the physicality as well. So it would, it would be very nice if it was uh, more of uh, conscious. If people understood the mechanism, they would be much more conscious about what they do for fun. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you're right. It's also addiction to drama. It's, it's very much addiction. In addition to addiction, I think they create negative timelines, negative developments. And when so many people are excited, well, where people pay attention to negativity through television, mass media, uh, all the negative news. The fact, I mean, it started in the 50s, even 40s, it started in the 40s when the first uh, reports of, of negative things started going on television. And, uh, and then the whole politics sort of was reoriented. I guess it was Martin Luther King who discovered that he needs to get on television to make any difference in politics. So they do also it through they did it through self sacrifice. But you know they needed to get on the news. So that was a very artful uh, play with self sacrifice to get on the news in the proper time with proper environment. They would get on the news and and that would change the world. And since then, it was everyone knows that you have to get on the news to do anything. And the news, more and more, specifically select the negative side of the of the of, of life and amplify that negative side. Like if there is no negative events, they would still find some some negative events and amplify them. And uh, that is because again, the the majority of people are still hungry for that. Like. Maybe most of us we are not hungry like the light workers, but it's it's dirty for us. It's just dirty. But uh, the majority they feel uh, for them it's not only the negative feeling of of sadism, but also it is lessons that they learn. So for, for some people it is an upgrade actually. Be going from second chakra to third chakra, it is an upgrade to be able to tolerate thrillers, for example. Yeah, thrillers are growing from second chakra, chakra to third chakra, so you can you, be, you become stronger and can tolerate it. You know, until that you can't really take it. So I say it's all all right. I mean, it's all right in terms of higher perspective, but it doesn't mean that we will make it. That is valuable just as a lesson for the. For the spirit, for the collective spirit, for the tree of life, it is a lesson. But the humanity has the the free choice, and whatever it makes. So it is the experiment which is largely out of control. So there is a general plan, but it has been, I think, uh, go. What's that word? Kind of. I think the general plan went sour many times. That's how we would say it. And now it is more like trying to fix the program, which has its own uh, own uh, free choice. So it's more like about human collective having free choice and choosing bad things and choosing the suicidal game. Any comments? What are some of the? Uh, do you have any updates on any of the latest events that have been occurring? <laughs> Like on, you know, it's having to do with any of the time, the time shift or the ascensions or any interesting news about the latest meeting, government meetings and things like that. No, I don't. <laughs> Friday or was it Friday, Max? We had. With yeah, I listened to it. Um, I wasn't there, so I couldn't ask questions, oh. <laughs> but I listened to it. Right, right. Yeah. It was without yeah. me. We don't have an update for percentages yet, then. No. Okay. It should come on Saturday. Yeah. Okay. I don't. I don't have much. I wish I could uh, enlighten you on that, but um, I I always tend to kind of go from present moment, like live in the present. I go way in the future, or way in the past. I can't really focus on what happens on Saturday, but. Um, yeah, on that I will reflect a little bit. Um, I did, um, I did couple things. Right, I guess it, it would fall into the news. Maybe not. So um, about three weeks ago, I decided to go on changing myself. 
like until then I was changing the outside world and then I was listening to mostly Ram Das and Ram Das is great uh, if you haven't listened to him go ahead and just google on YouTube search for Ram Das it's all he says is resonates with me greatly like I'm now in about maybe 20th or 30th of his is he still uh, he alive, he's alive, he still teaches, his uh, speech is impaired after the stroke, so he's not speaking that fast anymore. Okay, yeah, I love Ram Dass, but I didn't know if he was still alive or not, it's been yep. a while since. Yep, that's... he's still there, here, um, but I'm, I'm listening mostly to his uh, lecture before he had a stroke, so there is plenty of them, like, I'm yeah. around, maybe around 25th of them, and I still get a lot of advice right to where i am right like i have a lot of cds of his lectures and workshops that mm -hmm. he did over the years that like, are very mm -hmm. insightful today i was uh i just turned it on and in the first one minute i got right what i needed um so um so he was talking about changing yourself and i was decided i decided there is a lot of things which are stuck in my environment outside world and Bashar says, if you want the outside world to smile to you, you have to smile first, because outside world is secondary to, to your mind. So I decided that I have to change my mind, and I signed up to a lot of different, different events and uh, light work. It, it, in San Diego, you can, you, you can choose even there are competing events on the same day in San Diego, so you can sign up to as many as possible. So I signed up to a lot of them, and one of them was good, was really good. Um, actually, it happened that I organized something. I'm trying to, I'm now practicing for our for our August workshop in, in New York, Buffalo area. Um, and um, I have a lot of excitement about shamanic ceremony where you basically open the vortex. You walk around the fire, you pray to honor the uh, elementals and sides of the uh, the poles, how do you call it, north, south, uh, west, east. So this side, sides, sides of geographical sides and, uh, and work on similar things in fire. So... Is there someone in particular that's going to be leading that at at the workshop? Like, is have an actual a shaman, or is it someone within the group that's uh, well versed in shamanism? I don't know anyone. I guess I will do that. I don't know anyone who could uh, could lead that. Uh, but I, I have some experience now. I have some experience, so I'm practicing for that. I did I did lead uh, one shamanic ceremony here. I. I participated in another shamanic ceremony, which was more like Indian, um, American Indian traditional. So I have a general idea. And um, when I and I started the kirtan fire, so so I, I, I led one kirtan, which was another experience for me. On on the beach we met and uh, we had a kirtan uh, evening. Uh, so when I was organizing that, someone approached me on it's all done through facebook so someone approached me on facebook and this um is um devra uh who is organizing uh fire ceremony so it is an interesting fire ceremony i don't know which tradition it started from but she does it in it in in, in <clears throat> with some sort of mixture of traditional uh American Indian plus mostly it is uh, the flavor of so it's called Western magic, which is spelled CK magic. So they have all these kind of symbols and she, she's also doing theater. So there was some kind of poetry in theater. But in any case, uh, that was last uh, Saturday. Yeah, last Saturday night. It was absolutely amazing. It was the happiest time in my life the happiest time uh we were drumming and dancing around the fire and it was in a private location so we were kind of authorized to do whatever we wanted and it was kind of very enlightened very positive selected people not selected but somewhat selected people it was a crowd of people who do it for years already 
and what was just just the right thing to do. And there was certain symbology, certain positive kind of yoga yoga inspired energy there. So so I guess um, I wish there was like much more of that. So the structure of the ceremony is that there were like it's all was more like designed as a as a business as a retreat, but very very economically priced. So it was affordable. I think uh, if you wanted to participate only in ceremony, it was like twenty five dollars. So very affordable. And then so there was some workshops, some uh, teaching of um, kind of sort of body movement and dance. Uh, there was um, uh, you would write your desires and put them on the fence by the fire. The fire was a big fire surrounded by uh, torches, which stand alone torches. And the sides of the uh, like north, east, west uh, uh, and south were marked. And then there was an entrance and they used um, white flour to paint a labyrinth on that. And it was pr primitive labyrinth, but basically when people entered one by one, they were smudged with sage, burning sage, like they were uh, smudged. So that's that comes from Indian ceremony, traditional American Indian. Any and then use of peyote. Say good. Any use of peyote? No, it was drug free completely. I don't know what peyote is, but I think it's smoking, right? Um, well, it's a combination of whatever roots and concoction that they oh. boil up and <clears throat> It's a hallucinogen to take you into the fourth dimension. Wow. Yeah, I don't mind trying that, but it was, uh, no, it was completely drug free. Yeah, and I think that's a lot of it. It has to do with the, a lot of the, the uh, shamanic practices in, you know, like in Brazil, the rainforest. I see. So, yeah, so uh, people were prepared, instructed what to do. They entered one by one. And what was important, there was a group of people, and they took me as well. So there was eight people, or nine people, who total was about maybe 45, but nine of them were insiders who, who held the ground and held the ceremony. So at any point of time, nine of us were together. I still have that beautiful, they gave me a symbol of us being together. A thread and um, and uh, f from the crowd we kind of control the movement and uh, so one fifth of us basically was uh, was in uh, was the organizers so uh, people were asked instructed to silently walk around which was very weird uh, you know this silent walking in 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 the light of fire and the light of um, torches, I think it was sort of spooked me because I wasn't sure what we are doing. As a, I was new there, so I, I didn't find anything better rather than just chant my stuff. So I did chanting and uh, inviting the positive energies. But after that, it was clear that it was all positive. There was just a little element of negativity, like negative magic, dark magic, but but on general, it was 99% positive. And, uh, and then there was some theatrical play where we just kind of read some some script um, and it was nice and the, the theatric the, the fact the fact that it was a theater sort of I think made a piece for many people who are not who are undecided so they kind of participate in the theatrical ceremony rather than in a magic ritual but but largely it was a magic ritual and then we honored the the elements clearly and then we Mostly the speech was about the dreams, kinds of dreams, and honoring the dreams, the dream work. And then there was uh, lots of drums and uh, well, some committed drummers, and there was a drumming beat, and we just danced around the fire for two hours, and it was amazing. Was there any experience? Was there any experience with uh, possession or spirits? Yeah, I was afraid of that, but uh, I was ready for that, actually. I was ready for that. Um, I, no, there was nothing of that sort. Okay. It was very peaceful. It was very devotional. And uh, there was nothing of that sort, but I was ready to work on that. I invited lots of positive 
uh, Archangels. Archangels was invited by me and others. So it was Archangels, Angels, and other positive spirits. So there was, you know, it's easy to get possessed when you invite some negative spirits, but we clearly yeah. invited positive ones. So well, I didn't mean possession in the negative, but you know, they you the possession when they you know the sh when the shaman goes into the fourth dimension and oh he takes on entities. So it can be a very you know a, a very spiritual experience. I see. With having to come through the shaman. Uh, I think it was a spiritual experience as a group experience because it felt like absolutely ecstatic, but there was nothing specific. Okay. Uh, there was nothing of that sort. Um, just dancing was, was great. Uh, we were invited to chant different things. So uh, some people improvised, some people chanted some some known songs. And uh, we just co-created some poetry, like uh, just by, by under a drum beat. There was some, uh, some, uh, some talking and... Uh, Basically, the organizer invited the the creation of certain. Uh, it was in English, so we, we kind of spoke like wake up and things of that sort. And what type of things are you planning for your workshop in August, as far as along the lines of, you know, uh, engaging engaging in spirits or ETs and actually having interaction? Okay, so uh, first I want to repeat that. I want to repeat the drum drum fire experience um i think we we can do it it's it's uh, i i know the structure and i did i lead, i led one of them so so um uh, I, I will prepare that um and we, we we will have some drums people will bring some drums so that will we have uh, evenings for that uh for the c5 so it's close encounters type 5 I went right now. I went only to three of them, and first couple times there was nothing happened. Uh, things happened, but nothing visible happened. Say first two times there was sensations, but I didn't see anything reproducible. And I think what happened was that I was dragging the group down because the group was kind of how they say that. They used to go up in the main, the main, they shift to up, and they were, were able to see things. But when I was new and my vibration was not as high as theirs, uh, we merged our vibration, and they couldn't re couldn't reach that high. But I felt that you know we elevated ourselves, and on the third time they were capable of bringing me high, just by meditation. There was nothing special. They just shifted up. And I felt very comfortable, uncom very uncomfortable, but I saw the blinking stars, not bright, like medium-sized stars, and it was very consistent blinking, and all of us saw that. So several people at once would see the star just appear and disappear, like blink. And we just counted, was, I counted 24 times when me and someone else noticed the same blinking star. So it wasn't only my experience, it was a collective shift. I'm not sure, you know, the whole earth would see that. I'm pretty sure it was us shifting in a state where either we made the star blink or we shifted where we could see the star blink, stars blink. And possibly, like my image was that we would uh, shine into the sky with a laser pointer and the people on the, on the saucer would, uh, would, shine, would use laser pointer to, to, to flash back to us. But uh, so they, they, they did flashes. Uh, we think it's conscious and somebody I think was even able to communicate with those beings on, on the, in the sky. So it was sort of sort of uh, an intentional communication. And it, it lasted for about half an hour. So I want to do that and I'm, I'm hopeful that um, you know because we'll have special people in the, in the workshop that that um, You'll do that. The idea is that basically you, you do the guided meditation with uh, some sort of guidance, and then uh, you go into silence, and you intentionally avoid speaking on any topics other than if you notice something, you would discuss that with others, so others would get uh, on the same wavelength. So and it it, uh, it usually lasts for several hours. I don't think we'll have that much time on. Uh, 
on the on the, on the workshop, but uh, I think I'll do maybe a little more than an hour one day, maybe a little and the same thing maybe another day. So that's the plan. I have an idea for you if you're uh -huh. interested. We can uh -huh. talk online. Um, I I took a class some a while back, a workshop with Raymond Moody. And it was about how to recreate the environment which replicated uh, that of which uh, the ancient Greeks used in, uh, you know, the oracles at Delphi. Um, and recreating the environment to where you actually have 3D apparitions appear. And it was mind blowing and very, very fascinating. Um, and it's easily replicated and can be done. And if you're interested in a little, you know, knowing just a little bit more about that and what it entailed and, and what, you know, what you might expect from it, you know, I'd be happy to share that with you as perhaps. Of course, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Um, because it's a great way to open the lines of communication, whether, whether it, it, it be with a spirit or whomever um, in a very visual setting where it's just you in this small environment that's been designed to replicate, you know, the environment where they collected the oracles. Um, and, and it's, it's, it's mind blowing. <laughs> okay. It was, it was a fascinating workshop that I'll never forget. Do you know who Raymond Moody is? Sounds familiar, but no. Um, he was he was he he actually coined the phrase "life after life." He was the physician back in the seventies, and also has a PhD in philosophy uh, that started researching all the near death experiences. And through his forty years of doing the research, you know, he traveled back and forth to Greece and and drew upon his knowledge, uh, you know, with in, with the philosophers and the oracles and, and all of that and actually you know discovered and recreated what helped induce these visions and was able to share that with us and how and you know we set it up and he walked us through it and uh our group for the weekend that's what we did and we shared our experiences super so i mean if you're interested, I, you know, I'd, of course, I'd be, of course, just yes. kind of fill you in a little bit more and, and kind of what it entailed. And, uh, you know, for the most part, I think there's pretty much I, like uh, for the people who are doing it for the first time, there's probably about an 85% success rate of having, you know, some type of an experience on your first attempt. Wonderful. So, I mean, so, if it is safe, that's yes. Yes. It has to be children safe. friendly. You'll have two children in the in the group. Yes, I mean it's definitely children friendly. All right. Uh, other than that, um, how many spaces are left in your workshop? Do you know, uh, plenty so far. We have about twenty five subscriber uh, registrations, and uh, I think we can fit about forty. So we have um, fifteen more left. Fifteen, you said. Yeah, yeah, about fifteen left. Okay. We possibly will have to stop the open registration at uh, maybe 35 and then uh, at the last moment maybe we'll have some invited guests or some insiders who, who wanted to join so we'll uh, keep a few spaces. I, I really don't know, it depends on, so we, we have, uh, uh, I think, uh, I forgot already, maybe three showers and uh, six restrooms or maybe seven restrooms, how many people can uh, can uh, use that in the same time that's the main question if more people can uh, handle that then we can bring more people but i think it's it will be around 35 40. are you actually located in california now or are you still in new york i'm in san diego california and that would be in upstate new york between right. buffalo and rochester it's a mm -hmm. christian camp you used to live there right now yeah i lived there for several years yes about okay about six, seven years. It's just, just eight, trying to eight years. Out what I'm 
turn on the videos over the you know the weeks I've been listening, mm -hmm. watching them. And um, I heard you mention I thought you were in California now. It's nice. I think in August in New York might be very nice. Might be very nice. It's not too hot. Shouldn't be too too hot. And um, and it's pretty green. And uh, and the nature is pretty good. It's a nice place. It's near the a big how do you say drop. It's like the plane goes and then it drops for about a huge huge height and then it's again the plane. So. Right there is some geographical uh, geographical disturbance there, so I expect that there might be a vortex there or something like that. So, yeah, if you work there, the with you guys doing a, I saw the video of you guys, you know, kind of going around showing the place. It looks uh -huh. like a very rustic, out uh -huh. to nature, peaceful place. So I, I feel that we need to do much more of uh, vortex work, like uh, working on on. Um, Earth, Earth's uh, magnetic grid and uh, uh, opening the portal. So I think that's that would be one of the major topics that we will do. How do we start that and then spread it over? I don't and have much experience with that yet. And you was also going to be, uh, if I'm not mistaken, going to be doing a lot of courses or practicing with, with um, Reiki? Yeah, absolutely. So the Reiki... Reiki is straightforward. There is a great culture in, in, in Rochester. I think it would be like Reiki capital. There is a gr gr wonderful group. And compared to small number of population in Rochester, I think it's pretty, pretty active. So um, so we'll do, we'll teach people Reiki, initiate it, and uh, we'll do lots of one-on-one -on -one and one-on-many uh, practices. I mean, how much you can fit in four days, but we'll let everyone practice that. And we'll, for some, it is a healing, and for many, it would be working on upgrades. So, right. so we'll be doing, uh, and uh, I think I learned a little bit how to do group Reiki, so I can sort of guide a group Reiki meditation. So, it uh, essentially what happens is people are working on each other, but there is some unified field which kind of works on all of them together. And uh, we kind of synchronize people through sound. And another topic is um, telepathy and channeling. So, you know, we don't want <laughs> any negative effects of that, but we want to open up telepathy and channeling. So the, we and maybe it's a little bit of psychic work. So uh, I think we should do uh, practice. I have been to a few group practices where there is a class, there is some instruction, and then people are grouped together into small clusters, like by two or by five people. And then they work, practice their skill in, in that cluster, in that little group. So I think we'll do print out a lot of um, numbers and we'll give people numbers and then they group together by numbers and then um, and then they will do practice in, in a small group and then we will do uh, channeling practice, uh, telepathy practice and um, psychic work practice. I mean it's a little too much for four days but I think <laughs> At least we'll 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 start doing that. We'll start. Well, it could be. I think it could be very interesting and and very beneficial. I mean, given you know, depending on the group of people and and how the well they you know take to each other, mm -hmm. you know, quite a bit can be accomplished in small groups just with the bonds that can be developed as as well as the the, the cross sharing of, of information. Mm -hmm. I think it could be a great learning opportunity for many involved. Thank you. You could also ask maybe Yogananda what he thinks for this specific group could be useful. Oh, I'm talking to him all the time. Uh, it's it's uh, it's hard to tell where, where Yogananda is and where I am. Yes. Of course, Yogananda is sort of. It's just, um, but you know, how how do you tell? I mean, if if you got an idea, how do you tell where from did it come, right? <laughs> it's um, it, it's available for you as well. 
it's just you know the flavor from with which flavor do you get it i get a lot of guidance these days and some of that it was funny like one day uh i guess what it was for the previous webinar i asked them you know where should i do the webinar you know here at home it's you know i have plenty of time but i really want to go on the ocean and do it from the ocean and there is a beautiful energy so they said do it at home i said what if i yeah but on the ocean there is a beautiful energy they say yeah you can do it if you like so i stuck in traffic uh, my thing that i needed to boil before i go didn't boil at all like it took like i don't know crazy amount of time to boil the simple simple pot and i come there there is a problem with uh, with the connection so so you know <laughs> You ask for advice, you get the advice, and you know if you want to go do otherwise, they let you screw yourself otherwise. So instead of a simple meditative preparation, I had a lot of hurrying and pushing. But yeah, there is a lot of guidance. Right. Okay, I feel like I have to go. It's after midnight for me. Oh, so what what? Where are you located? As East Coast. Uh huh. So sure. Have a good night. After me, no, I can't. <laughs> okay, but thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Hey, Ted. Thank I, you. I, I didn't hey. speak to Ted yet. Want to speak? Hi, Max. Yay. How you doing, brother? Oh, that question always puzzles me. Um. I think wonderful. Thank you. How are you? <laughs> great, great. I'm always good. A any more comments, questions, topics? Uh, can you hear me, Max? Yes, uh, Sakina, yes. Uh, I don't have any questions, but the, the plan thing earlier when we were talking about, uh, Sachi Sai Baba had talked about that plants have um they feel vibrations you know they, they yes they, they just it's, it's on the vibration level and so the pain is not as much as the bigger animals feel you know sure yeah and so that is why he said that that's more um humane to eat plants is because they actually don't feel the pain they feel the vibrational you know effect right Mm -hmm. no, no. The, yeah, that's a huge topic. I mean, it really just depends on perspective. My point, or Yogananda, Yogananda's and my point was that, and uh, Ram Dass's point is that you got to, you know, you can be a holy man sitting in a cave and meditating and eating only prana and the light and feeding on light and doing that. Yeah. But, um, if you wish to help humanity maybe it's just a fee more efficient it's not that you can you can uplift humanity by meditating by yourself but it just could be more efficient as bashar said as well to do it in a simpler way just go into humanity and work with it and if you have to go down to humans or whatever sideways if you go sideways and come to mainstream humans you have to eat what they eat and be with them and be on the same wavelength. So that's a choice and it's a tough choice, especially for those who did a lot of work of purification. How do you come back? But it is possible. And what Ramdas says, just uh, you have to be successful as human and you have to be successful. You can be successful as human. You can be successful as a spirit. So, and you're going to repeat that. So, so, uh, that's, I guess, one of the major points. After you are ready, after you feel strong enough, you come back and uh, and work here. And I think uh, then eating whatever others eat is justifiable. You, by eating and um, intending it well, you sort of heal that trauma. It's kind of, from certain perspective, it is lame, or was it, uh, there is a word, it's fake, but it's not. You really can uh, work through mainstream ways, experience them, and then uplift them. And, and through that, you, you teach your peers. 
if you don't do it for for selfish reasons, if you do it for healing reasons, it, it's it's appropriate. That's my point. You don't have to be. You don't even have to be the saint, and you shouldn't be the saint. Um, you should be playing on the field, doing what other people do. People do, but at the same time, intend really, really positively, and intend to heal it. Uh, you are you are muted by some reason. I can't hear you. I guess somebody turned you off. The spirits play with your electronics. I don't see the sign of muting, but Sakina, you're speaking and there is no sound here. Unless, can uh, others hear something? I haven't. I haven't been able to hear. All right, thank you. You know what, Max? That happened to me, and I had to go. I'd leave the meeting and come back in, and then all of a sudden it was fixed. So, Sakina, that would be the fix, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So, you can't hear me right now? Oh, now no, you're good. Oh, so it, it's in and out. Today, the picture also goes small, and then it goes big and small and big. Oh, that is me, maybe. When I click something, like it goes like small. Ah, oh, I see. Big. Okay. It's me. Okay. Um, well, how come your banner didn't come today? Oh, I... Um, if you look at the schedule, I do Tuesdays on Tuesday mornings in Uganda. For me, it would be the morning. For uh -huh. Eastern time, it would be 12:30 in the afternoon. But uh -huh. in the morning, I can. I it's easier for me to channel because the energy is kind of fresher. And in the evening, yeah. I, exactly. I, uh, I wanted finally to speak for myself once in a while. Uh, yeah. Because I, uh, you know, the idea is I want to go. Yeah, that's that. That is exciting for me to, uh, to expand my teaching to other audiences, not only for Hukula but for other audiences. And I have been to a few conventions when people were speaking on like um, it's like consciousness expo in uh, in Los Angeles and things of that sort. And there are some retreats in um, Joshua Tree nearby. So I want to sort of grow into a speaker which is uh, capable of holding the audience better. But I'm not there yet. I'm I'm still learning. Max, it was, is it my understanding that uh, was it not too long ago you were having a difficult time channeling and is it recently you were actually have been successful in being able to channel because I was uh, watching, it might have been sort of, road. it's, you know, it's, it's a question. How do you perceive it? Because I still don't know what is happening. It's really hard to get confirmations from them. Like you, you feel like you are channeling, but um, until you produce real confirmed miracles, you really don't know what's happening. Like, how do I know that I, I mean, I, I, I'm still afraid that, you know, that's me speaking, not Yogananda, right? <laughs> I get an, I'm certainly getting a special state, that's for sure. Um, I tried once to channel many beings, like, I was switching them, like, maybe many, like, there was Grindel, there was someone else, someone else, someone else, and it was exhausting, I was sick after that, so... That means that something is happening. It's it's not only me pretending to be other beings. There is some spiritual work happening. And also I have a lot of kind of, um, how do you call it, incidental evidence. Like before the webinar, there is some spirit work. During the webinar, there is some spirit work. And I feel when I speak, when I lose the connection, I really feel it. At some point, like something can switch in me and I lose the connection. And then, how do I channel after that, right? So I, I, uh, you know, I have to get the connection back to to be able to speak. Uh, so uh, I'm still learning. It's um, just understanding that you don't have to look for outside, and you don't have to listen to hear any voices. It comes from inside, and you just feel it, basically. Um, and Is it similar to hypnosis in that sense, to like if whenever you do a regression, you just kind of start talking and you don't know if it's your imagination or if it's authentic uh, there was yes there was a couple experiences in a different setting it was one was with my um friend who just recently died and um, she did with me sort of uh, psychic work where um i had to answer the question like there was a question how many personalities do you have 
and I feel using Reiki, I felt like there are different methods, but I used my, my Reiki psychic sensation method. So it was clearly number three. So I said three, and then she asked me to give the names for them. So I gave the names, and then she asked me to become one of them and speak for that. And I did. And at that moment, it was clearly different personalities. Three different personalities came came through me. One was very sad, another one was very neurotic, and third one was very dominant and happy, happy and dominant. And they, they clearly the, all three of them were in conflict to, to each other. It was so beautiful. I I couldn't predict that when when things came out. I cried for one and I laughed for another and I was so happy when I was dominant and uh, actually pretty sadistic uh, personality. So um, that was one state when I didn't fake it, it just happened. And um, and it was, uh, I was working on the audience so I, I, I just allowed it to flow, it was absolutely easy. It was guided and, uh, and that I felt and then I had the feeling how it happened, so I had that signature sensation where you allow some some sub personality to come. So now when I channel Ganada, it's something from inside, not from something outside. It's just part of me speaking. And the second thing it was when um, I went to a it's called um, how do you say it? Rastanovki po says it's a uh, I don't know the translation in English, I have to Google it, but basically it is some sort of psychic work with a, a group of people and they work mostly on uh, family situations and uh, there um, one person asks specific questions about their relationships usually, could be relationships with people, relationships with money, with relationships with, uh, with creativity and then it is uh, the the participants are invited to represent again represent these aspects or individuals in in their life like like grandfather father mother child or something like that. So when people stand in that situation and they volunteer to represent them, they start a channel and they, that channeling works really well for any people. Like there was like. I think 13 people in, in, in the workshop and most of them were able to channel this this uh, aspects and it was amazing but the facilitator did something with the with the some spirit work so they had to touch a person to let them channel so there was that touch which sort of tuned in tuned them in into into channeling so actually in my class I want to try that as well and what was funny my channeling was worse than others because I tried to use some sort of different technique and uh, I couldn't as easily tune into the situation. I was uh, blocked in some way. What was funny, like, you know, I had more experience channeling, but in that situation I did less channeling. When it starts to happen, because I, I've been trying to, you know, do this myself and what I, what I feel is you know, what I perceive to be as strong, strong waves of energy hitting me. Uh, you know, I can feel it on, on my right side and around my head and just intense, intense, you know, uh, energy, you know, like the, the goosebumps just, just waving over and over on you. And, yep. and, and to me, I'm like, okay, is this happening? And I just try to let it flow and try to, you know, and try to relax and just try to let it happen. But that's as far as I get. <laughs> Is that normal? Or do you experience that same type of sensation? Uh, feeling the energy is great. Yeah, it is uh, part of the process. Mm. I uh, Sometimes I do, but mostly I don't actually. I don't know why, but I think I just kind of got used to the energies and it's not as as external anymore it's more like you get into the flow and you stay in the flow for the whole period from the beginning to the end okay and um, you feel differently I when when it ends I try to continue my usual routines and I feel that I'm not exactly in the same place and the normal routines are not 
allowed with this energy basically I get in the conflict so if I'm in high I need to do some special exit procedure to come back to my routines because you're high you have that energy but this energy can be used only for special purposes so I can do that that and that but I cannot do that that and that right at times I feel like I probably need to raise my vibration and the only way that I know how to do that would be, you know, while in the meditative state to do a visualization, uh, you know, to do that of shooting up and going through the colors of the chakras. Do you, do you have a way or what is your method of intentionally wanting to raise your uh, frequency? Oh, my, my certain way chanting, chanting is like number one nowadays. I started yeah. recently, I started maybe less more than a year ago, but less than two years ago. I don't know. Chanting just came naturally, and uh, after Ram, after Krishna Das, Krishna Das just I immersed myself in Krishna Das. It was um, you have um, you can subscribe to Spotify. Spotify is one of the streaming services you can install it on the smartphone, and for ten dollars a month you can get access to any any content there, and there is like tons of Krishna Das. Maybe maybe about 60 workshops each of them is about two hours so 100 more than 100 hours of krishna does and have i listen the audio the, the you know the the with the headphones and to where they come in multiple frequencies and either higher frequencies right or it's or called uh binaural binaural hemi sync hemi sync binaural yeah i yeah. have that system and uh, i might just have it here was that effective for you? I it was effective once. Um, I went to a place where we did group Reiki, Reiki share, and in a special room there was a friend who did uh, that allowed people to borrow this this device, and uh, he would just uh, lay lay down on on a sofa and uh, meditate right. using that. So I did this. I didn't feel much much except the light was too bright and the music was too loud but you can adjust i found the, the the controls i just didn't know that there were controls for brightness it's um it's called prasayan um it's called prasayan and um, i guess i should write it down you can find it for about 200 dollars on amazon used uh, and new i think new is like 250 and uh, used maybe less than 100 less than 200 maybe prasigned prasign mine mine machine machine i think that's how it's called prasign can you see prasign mine machine can you see yeah it? yeah it's a, so it's uh -huh. a, it's a, a machine. It, uh, it this looks like a uh, uh, a tape player, like you know, like twenty years ago there was like tape players, like portable walkie players, yeah. and um, it has uh, goggles with uh, little colored uh, light diodes, so they would flash into your eyes, but you close your eyes, so uh, the flashes can go. Spread over like diffuse light. No, not focus, but diffuse light over your closed eyes. Oh, over. Okay, I see. And it pla and it flashes the various lights. Yep, different frequencies, and yeah, it I also see. has the sound, like buzz, right. like oh, yes, and it also does it uh, asynchronously. So it goes with a little shift right or left with eyes, and a little shift right or left with ears. So it goes and moves around the center of that focus moves around your brain and there are many programs and what is nice there is a community of people who develop new programs it's programmable on your computer you can write your own program what what frequencies would you send but and basically you, as i understand go ahead i was gonna say and you did you you found that helpful and worth the worth the investment yeah it, it, it was a step it was a step for me so basically first time i try oh here it is i actually found it uh, first, first my experience was that I didn't like it. I, I felt nothing special except the pain. 
it was like pain, little pains here and there. But when I came home, I have that my my usual test. Mm. It's called um, daily remote view the remote view daily. You can find the website remote view daily. Basically, once a day they give you the test for uh, what will be posted there later. So first you they ask you you claim your answer. Uh, and you have to guess what will be on the photograph. And on that day, I, I, I guess it's right. So it tuned me up so my psychic abilities were better. So you, I don't remember what was that, but I guessed it right. And after that, once in a while I get it, get, get it right, but usually I don't. Like, usually right. in normal state, I don't get the right answer. Those so. are primarily used for remote viewing, right? Yeah. So, okay. my remote, so that thing helped me with the remote viewing. That's okay. It. Yeah, I've seen mm -hmm. those. Mm -hmm. And um, it has a. Uh, that's how it looks. And these are the programs, some different programs in that. And I have comments this I tried, this I tried, this I didn't try, blah, blah, blah. Right, right. And, um, but basically, what I think the principle is it gives you different brainwashing frequencies. So that's the goggles, and that's the light diodes in it. Actually, I can maybe turn it on. So it 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 brainwashes you, and when it start when 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 I feel, it goes in a certain part of the brain. The light frequency and the pulses of the sound, they kind of go focus on different parts of the brain, and when they enter some trauma, you feel pain. Enter some blockage, like uh, in the past you you sort of had experience so you blocked it off and it's blocked now it's kind of closed like 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 the wall of insulation and that frequency is prohibited and when it starts in your brain you would actively inhibit it and if it starts stronger you would feel pain so you inhibit it again so that thing allows you to experience that pain and initially i was fighting it i was trying to kind of reduce the sound and kind of block myself, but then I realized what I need is to unblock myself. So I need to actually experience that pain and allow myself to relax and allow that frequency to unblock that part of the of the of the trauma. And I think that's what I did. I did these meditations, not very often, but I did these meditations and um, and with that I kind of unblocked a lot of things. And when you unblock a lot of things uh, you start making mistakes again. So you have to be careful about if you are unblocked, you don't actually do, you become le more cautious, actually. You should uh, allow yourself, like, like if you are drunk, you you walk really careful without hitting your head over things, right? So, so, you, so assume you are drunk after that uh, for a while and you have to recalibrate your senses. Right. Mm, that's about it. But I think that helped me to unblock a lot of things. So that's... You can see blinking, right? It starts yeah. slowly, but then it goes in high frequencies. Yeah. I've, I've thought about investing in one of those, but, you know, I didn't know about how effective it would be. And then, of course, you know, the cost was a little high. And, you know, as you know, there are so many gadgets out of those that, that are just gimmicks. Yeah. Um, the, this, know, is, this is this is an old one now. They have a newer, more, more expensive machine. But I think this one works perfectly. It was well-designed back then, like 10 years ago, 12 years ago, and now it's on discounted price used. It's pretty cheap. I hey, think maybe. Uh -huh. I think Tad had something to say. I think Tad had something to say. Oh, oh I was just going to ask Ian, uh, if Ian, have you tried uh, spinning or whirling, Ian? I'm not familiar with that. I've done that. Okay, well... Yeah, it's it's a lot of a lot of different people teach it, and actually the Pleiadians and some others have taught a lot about it too. And the thing is, is that I found fine with myself is that it immediately activates all of my energy centers. As a matter of fact, you can feel heat building up immediately up and down your spine, and especially around your neck, right around your fifth chakra, and it's been really helpful for me, especially uh, learning to channel as well. Um, 
you get dizzy at first. Everybody gets dizzy, but you get used to it pretty quick. Um, um, is there a place? Was there a place like? Do you know that I can go and and get information on it, like on the web? Like, what would I search under? Yeah, you can uh, actually watch. Um, matter of fact, I'll link it for you here. Hang on just a second. I know I came across it. Let me go through the video too. So. Sorry. Yeah, I, mean, love uh, I started out on on the five Tibetan rites, but then I realized there was um, a couple of Barbara Marciniak channelings that took place where they were saying that um, you can spin a lot. You can work up to 33 times or 33 revolutions and then three times a day is as crazy as that sounds it's 99 times total I think I've and, heard uh, yeah it was in um, some of the bringers of the dawn material from Barbara Marciniak and it was uh, I have to admit it's very powerful so what, what's it actually called that I could do like a google search on it I would actually look under YouTube for the five Tibetan rites. Okay, I love Tibetan. And then, yeah, that was in uh, a book actually that was channeled from the 90s that was about um, longevity, about improving health and longevity. Five Tibetan rites. And so what you're doing is you're rotating clockwise with your arms straight out. So you're creating the five-pointed uh, star, essentially, and then you're rotating. You can go as slow or as fast as you want, whatever you're comfortable with. And when you turn clockwise, of course, you're counting usually up to 21 on the Tibetan rites. I do 99 times per day three, in three different sessions, so it's 33 times. That's probably overkill. I, I just found a bunch of you, Okay. Yeah, thank you. I yeah, I just found them on YouTube. So cool. Thank you. I, I love Got trying it. to do things like that. <laughs> yeah, you'll be dizzy at first, but you get used to it pretty quick. You're supposed right. to bring your hands into a prayer position right at your heart after you're done with the 21 or however many you're going to do. And keep your eyes open because I've noticed when you close your eyes, you don't sense the spinning at all. But with your eyes open, you still sense the spinning even after you've stopped. And you're just sitting there balancing. And then what I do is, this this enhances it for me, is you, after you, after the spinning is stopped in your mind's eye, you can go and do a pillar of light uh, visualization. Where you see a pillar of light coming down onto you, lighting up, all of your energy centers all the way down to the base chakra and then engulfing you know making an egg shape around you of, of golden white light and that that's my completion of my of my uh, session of, of spinning so is this primarily to to uh, activate or balance your chakras is that its intent yeah, I do it right before meditation and right before that I right before I attempt any channeling. Um, I've found it really helpful. So, so how successful have you been at um, learning or developing the skill of channeling? Uh, I've only had it happen spontaneously a couple times where my higher self has come through. I've actually been talking to uh, a young woman who was really felt she was a star seed and really on the edge of committing suicide really because she did not understand society just as all of us have problems we don't understand the hate and the anger and everything else and I came through with my higher self spontaneously and I don't entirely remember everything that was said but she was obviously profoundly affected by what what was said but this and is just it totally changed so Go this ahead. is the person you were talking to, and then all of a sudden, boom, you just started. Yep. 
you know, I felt it come me. on, just like you. I felt it come on. I felt the tingling come up and down my my arms and legs, and then all of a sudden, I started getting hot right in my neck area and tingly in my neck area. And the next thing I know, um, I'm saying stuff that's not coming from my own intellect. <laughs> as yeah. strange as that sounds, I've had that happen to me before in just you know conversations with people all of a sudden you're talking and you don't even know what you're really saying you don't even know where the information is coming from because you're not knowledgeable about it but you're not conscious of it until like after you hang up or the conversation is done you reflect and you're like where the hell did that come from <laughs> exactly exactly something i never would have said but it was such a heartfelt thing that you know, she told me what I had said later on, and it was really, I mean, it almost brought myself to tears because you were kind of thinking, wow, I, you know, <laughs> that was powerful. So you didn't remember what you said, actually? I didn't remember everything. I remembered the first few words, and then that was it. And then oh. when she, she actually um, asked me, do you remember what you had said? And I said, no. And she, so she wrote everything down. She remembered it almost word for word and sent it back to me. And it was, it was profound. It was, it was something that I would never have said. I wouldn't have said it with that much heart chakra. You know, it just, well, it's, it's amazing that it though, happened, it's amazing that it happened spontaneously rather than you, you know, going through the ritual and, and preparing and, 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 you know, trying to get ready to channel and make it happen. It just happened. Well, and that's what's kind of frustrating, to be honest with you, because I haven't been able to actively channel when I, on on demand, you know. I've been practicing every multiple times a day, in fact. Um, my wife would probably tell you I spend way too much time <laughs> doing that and not, and not doing other things, but... I still cannot on-demand channel, no. Have you asked for assistance from any of the uh, entities that are channeled by Jim or, or anybody else? I have not. Uh, one of my friends who channels, James McConnell, he channels uh, One Who Serves and some others. He's been trying to help me, but... Um, no, the the only thing I've done is I have gone through the um, affirmations. All, all of the affirmations I say every night on what my intentions are for having that skill. But right. um, no, I would love to ask Tekur or one of those to I, assist me, of course. I recently had a session with Jim that was fascinating. And um, I um, had a, uh, a pretty lengthy discussion with Ish, uh, one of the beings that I think a lot of people in the group are familiar with Ish. And he was very helpful um, and gave me advice and, 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 and hopefully, you know, said that they were assisting me in, in getting myself developed to do that and just kind of gave me some instruction. So, Max, do you think, like at the August workshop, that, you know, in the channeling sessions, uh, I mean, do you think possibly some Reiki sessions could help in the development of those who wish to channel? Yeah, and... that, of course, that would be the intention, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I expect miracles. Like, you know, there is will be high concentration of us who are all into one topic. Right. So, and we will kind of work on all aspects. We will do, we do work with outside vortexes, with the Reiki and uh, practice. So I think we should be able to reach certain certain nice successes. Right. And uh, just being in, in an environment, like being near gym is, is a great um, bliss. Yeah. So, so a lot of things go between the words. Just, uh, but being in an environment where it's normal, by itself is very opening. Like like until I until I met this group of group Reiki, like first it was just one one healer, it was sort of an uh, outlier, but when you come in a group Reiki setting where is like Reiki share where 
all everybody is doing Reiki, and you are maybe a beginner, but everybody else is more advanced than you, then you kind right. of see the road that, you know, how it's done without uh, without harming yourself, how it's done safely, naturally, and uh, the whole culture was there, like, you you don't exhaust yourself doing Reiki, so you don't exhaust yourself doing channeling. Jim does channeling, like, easily, like, we drive a car, I yeah. need to speak to Takur, and I say, Jim, can you bring Takur, we need to discuss that question, and he said, just a minute, in a minute Takur comes, we have a discussion, then we continue, you know, then she leaves, and we continue as usual. So like it's that. nice to have a phone line to, to like, sometimes, you know, I join, join Lennon just to ask him about about music. It, it was great okay. to have that phone line to... A little bit that I found this interesting was that, you know, in my discussion with issues, you know, giving me some information on, you know, other beings and who would be interested in channeling with me and why and how they, who, would, you know, could help me. And then he was about to, he was getting ready to tell me about, you know, some someone that had an interest in channeling with me, you know, in the fourth dimension mm -hmm. uh, from ancient Greece. And as soon as he was being ready to tell me the individual's name, we were disconnected. That happens, story. yes. Sometimes it is because of uh, prohibitions on their side, and sometimes it's because you get too excited. Well, he told me that um, the individual... <laughs> We, we managed to reconnect, and um, he had said evidently that individual wanted his identity disclosed at that time, so he mm -hmm. disconnected the call. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. All right. And actually, our call was disconnected twice over our discussion. Yeah, that happens. They, you know, uh, so often. And um, sometimes they just expect me to say something inappropriate, they disconnect. And I say, no, no, I, what I wanted to say was appropriate, please connect me back. And that sometimes helps. I yeah, meant I, that, that, and that. I find that interesting how, you know, how they can manipulate the electronics and because, uh -huh. you know, it, it was just because it was on my side. My Wi-Fi connection between my PC and my Wi-Fi router was disconnected, but yet my phone was still connected to my router. Everything else was fine. It was just specifically my PC to my router connection uh -huh. was what disconnected. Um, so it was very specific. <laughs> there are also some fancy things on, on, on the video. Sometimes the video becomes blurry. Like with Zechariah, it was like really messed up when he was channeling. It was uh, the uh, artifacts on the video were like very strong. Right. And I've had, I've, I've seen other experiences where, you know, someone's channeling and they were channeling Edgar Casey, and then um, Yezua came in and right at that time, the microphone blew mm -hmm. <laughs> with, you know, all the energy in the room. Um, I wanted to play that music. Can you hear it? Can you hear? Uh, you should be able to hear it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm playing it from... Uh, Procyon, Procyon, and it is actually stereo microphone, so she'll be able to hear stereo. But you normally put there the... It's brainwave entrainment. Yeah, exactly, Bra brainwave entrainment. The, right. um, to make it pleasant, you, there is an, an entrance, you put here your cell phone and you play pleasant music from the cell phone, so it's overlay of the entrainment waves and some other meditative music so it becomes very interesting and every time it's a unique combination of normal music and um, entrainment entrainment right. sound I, I listened to that hemisync stuff quite a bit while i when you know while i'm in bed going to sleep at night you know various frequencies depending on whether my objective is um and i've been doing that for years but I was just wondering someone else's opinion as to, you know, the validity of it as, and, and if anyone else has found that actually it works. Yeah, it works. I spent about 10 years working on uh, brainwave entrainment and I notice it's kind of like taking melatonin every night. It works, but the more you do it, the less effective it seems to be. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's it's almost it's the same thing with the Samuel Sagan third eye activation, which are very powerful. I mean, 
turn you from an outright non-believer into a full-blown believer of third eye activation and yet it only works for a period of time you have to switch techniques in order to keep working on the third eye uh, activation or the third eye just shuts off um, so like it's like you know, developing so a, it's like developing a tolerance mm -hmm. somewhat yeah it's it's like the in in this in this instance the third eye basically stops activating at all even though it's hearing the same things that caused powerful activations before and this happens maybe after a week of listening to it every night you know so if you can take a break for a week it'll it'll work again you know it just it's just something that's it stops working if you're doing it every night well, it sounds like I can get a lot of great ideas from you guys. It's, mm -hmm. That's why I like collaborating is because of all the different experiences everyone has. Hey, Max, I have a question. Have, you, right. ever, have you ever listened to the Tom, I think his name's Tom, Tom Kenyon, the Hathor frequencies? Uh, I am familiar, but I don't think I did a lot of it. I just, just okay. a little bit. I, I have no, no experience. I just know what it is. That's all. Okay. But I think it's a good stuff. I think um, I was okay. told that I'm connected to, to Hathor, so so that's why too. maybe chanting is, is dear to me. Yeah, I play a lot of the sound. I, you know, sound is is something very, you know, very... Mm, <clears throat> how do you say? Oh, oh, wait a second, wait a second, I'm sorry. Before I get off this subject... Mm -hmm. You guys have to try gong meditations. Uh -huh. If you're w working on energy activation, energy center activations, very, very powerful. Man, oh man, very powerful stuff. As a matter of fact, let me pull up the one I've been listening to. It's just been really good. Uh, they have gong meditations, sounds, uh, music, yoga. Which would it be? <laughs> uh, this was called Sounds True Gong Meditation. And it was by, was it by Adashanti or? Sounds Hang on true. just a second. Sounds true. Yes, so what happens is I noticed with my energy centers, when I start these gong meditations, you immediately get vibrations that sweep from head to toe. If you've ever done any astral projection where you're just on the edge of going into an astral projection, you get vibrations. They're, they're just electrical vibrations, but they feel as though they're physical sound vibrations that, that sweep from head to toe and back again. And that's exactly what happens with the gong meditations is it forces your energy centers into a vib vibratory um, flow that goes up and down your spine and you can physically feel it it's very powerful There's quite and a um, yeah Harajwan Khalsa is, is the one that I've got I think there's quite a few of them listed on YouTube You know what I can do? I mean, there are a lot of them have, with, are regarding Tibetan bowls. Um, and there's a series by Sounds True. Yeah, let me fire up that audio file real quick and I'll tell you. I'll just make sure this is the right one. While you're... While you're searching, let's ask Sakina. Sakina, did you want to say something? Again, we can hear you. <laughs> All right. You're muted again. I'm sorry. Am I taking up too much of your time? Mm -hmm. No, you're good. Okay, okay. You Sakina, we can hear you now. Yes. Oh, okay. I just have to turn the speaker off, and then I turn it on, and it comes on. Um, yeah, a gong is something I can relate to. 
because of the vibration, somehow I'm in tune with it, you know. Um, Max, where are you? <laughs> I'm here. Hello. Hello, hello. Hello, I'm here. Okay, I'm muted again. I don't know. Okay, good, good. You're good now. I came muted again. I don't know. Some, something is muting you. I'm sorry, Sakina. We can't hear you. Well, good okay yeah. this is okay. uh yeah this is go ahead sorry okay okay can you hear me now yeah yep. so um yeah i i'm more in uh the heart thing you know the deeper i go in the heart the more i tune in you know mm -hmm. and uh, so it's more like you know when you do yogananda it's like it's coming up and, and Baba has also had me to go inside, deep inside, in order to get in touch with him, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm also trying to, you know, to, uh, rather channel or to connect and completely become one in tune with the vibrations of Baba, you know? So... What, how did you go into the heart thing? You know, what is it? I know gong, it attracts me now because that makes me go inside more. What else can uh, Max, you were doing that got you connected with Yogananda and, um, you know, more like the heart, Christ consciousness thing, right? Um, um. The heart is the matter which is really hard to describe with words. You basically just uh, feel it, um, allow yourself to melt, I guess. You melt your mind control and uh, get off your mind. You turn, turn your mind off and move into the heart. So chanting is the answer for me. I use also incense, like I use uh, burning incense. It's not psychedelic. It's just, just wonderful burning smells which kind of... Uh, wow. Uh, a signal for subconscious that you are in a safe, uh, high high vibrational environment. So, um, all meditation techniques are basically to turn off the mind. So the mind has to go asleep while the heart still to be awa be awakened. Yeah. I use Reiki. I send the Reiki to the heart. I work on the heart with Reiki. I send the energy, and I feel it moving. Uh -huh. And um, it is something that really is undescribable. You move from thinking into feeling. Yeah. Um, um, breathing, breathing. Breathing, absolutely, yes. Breathing, yeah. yes. Yeah. So, visualization uh, practice, of... Practice, practice. Um, I don't know what I visualize. I de-visualize. De-visualize the material things and go into, into non-material light. Basically, I, I shift into the light. I step into the light. Yeah, that is the part of the meditation. I go into the light. I, when I feel the light is coming and it's coming after a while, I move into it. I kind of embrace it and amplify it. Ah. Yeah, I, I work on it to make it brighter. So I see when I send energy to it, it grows bigger. I come into it. I enter it. And after that, it's undescribable. I can't, I don't even remember yeah, what happens. I, I when I, when I start breathing and I'm, you know, I'm relaxed and I'm, you know, smelling the incense and all, and then I start to feel that vibration, right? So it's like just go and expand it. Yep, just yep, yep. It, it, help right? it, help it. You enter it. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, Ted, uh, you say thank you for sending the thing. Let me share the screen. I will share yeah, that site. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Here it is. Can you see it? It's it's called Sounds True. And uh, the site is soundstrue.com. And the meditation is called Kundalini Meditation, what Ted sent us. By mm -hmm. Hari... Hari Jivan... Hari Jivan... Khalsa. Is that what Ted was talking about? 
Yeah, that's what Ted sent us. Yeah, that's that's the one. Yep. Okay. Great. Keep that up for just a second if you don't mind. All right. I'm copying it down. All right. It's also yeah, in the. You won't in the, be disappointed, I promise. It's in the chat box as well. I just show it for the record, so when I put oh, it on YouTube, I, people can find it. I got it now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now, what he does is he goes into a description of how to activate the different chakras, and then about an hour and 20 minutes into it is when the actual um, gong meditation starts. And you kind of need to be lying down or something because it's, I'm telling you, I'm not pulling your leg. It's very, very powerful. Cool. I love to have my mind blown. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, um, Max. I mean, I really enjoyed this session. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we, we run out of time. Yes, we should start wrapping up. Any more questions before we finish? <laughs> Sakina, you are speaking, but we can't hear you again. Bless her heart. I am. Um... Hey, Ted. Go ahead. No, go no, ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Was today was just a really weird day all around mm -hmm. here anyway. So it was nice that we had this nice uplifting chat to kind of smooth things over. Oh, right. L let me do the guided meditation. I guess I can, can, can finish with the guided meditation. So the guided meditation will be for Ted and you can uh, hook, hook into it as well. So Ted, we will, be, right. we will be activating your channeling ability. Just a second. Hey, Tad, is your wife into all of this as well as much as you are? She's a she's a druid. She's a she's from Scotland, so she's um, a nature nature witch, I guess, <laughs> I guess you could call it. Yeah, is she's she... she's fine with it. She doesn't. Uh, she thinks all of the alien stuff is crazy, but mm -hmm. she's also been in on sessions where I've had past life regressions as alien species. So she's yeah. starting to come around, let's say. The, the alien <laughs> thing takes a little while to get your wrap your brain around. So she's in touch with the nature realm and, and, the, and, the, and the fairies and things like that. Oh, yes. Check out on our site. There is a. I did an interview through Jim with uh, with a fairy, a male fairy, and I think it was a lot of uh, unknown stuff about fairies was revealed. It's it was like about three years ago. So just search Hukola, Hukola okay. interview fairy. Yeah, because I, I love reading and learning stuff about the fairy realm. And now I meet uh, meet uh, have met several fairies incarnated. They have very sp wow. similar qualities, similar qualities to each other. And All right. for me, like my husband is uh, very much a druid, and I'm very much galactic. So it's just mm -hmm. the opposite. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's amazing. Well, I'd love to learn all this. Uh, I'm I'm a I'm a sponge, so I like to absorb everything I can. Yeah, I am too. Interesting group of people. Great group of people. All right. Prepare for the meditation. Relax, sit comfortably. Make sure you can really like relax and put down whatever you can put down. The intention for this meditation is to open your channeling ability. Allah ya I invite angelics to assist with that Allah
Keep breathing consciously and deeply. Breathe in. Hold for a short while and then breathe out at your own timing. Allah, 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 Allah. We start with the gratitude to elements, to fire, to water, to air, to earth. Allah, 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 Allah. Visualize yourself to be part of Earth. You're like a plant growing on the Earth, of the Earth, of the material of Earth. And you combine in yourself the element of fire. You are fire. The element of air. You are air. And the element of water. You are water. Allah, 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 And you go beyond. You are the spirit. Allah, 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 Allah. You had many, many, many incarnations on earth. Allah, Allah, Allah. Many, many incarnations on other planets and stars. Allah, Allah, Allah. And you are an infinite soul. Allah, 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 Allah. You choose to serve through channeling. Allah, Allah, Allah. Say, I choose to serve others through channeling. Allah, Allah, Allah. I choose to serve others through channeling. Allah, 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 Allah. My intention is positive. I intend to serve. Allah, 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 let's focus on your heart. Allah, Allah, focus on your heart. Grow fire in your heart. Allah, 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 put your palms on your heart and send the healing, activating, opening energy into your heart. I'm sending it now. Allah, the energy goes into your spine, into your hands, into your heart, and it clears up the channel there. Om, uh, the green color to wash the heart. Allah, uh, water, rain to wash the heart. The sound of purifying wind to wash the heart. Purify the heart. Allah, now let's place a connector there. It is a fiery, fiery vortex connecting you to their your physical body connects to higher dimension, to the fourth dimension. We place a connector. It is a vortex. It's a golden vortex connecting it to the higher dimension. So it will be used as a communication connector, a channel to from the heart to a higher dimension, to the say fourth dimension. Allah, Allah. Say, I accept, I accept, I accept. Now we put that connector into stasis, into inactive position, and it will be activated only when needed. So it is safe to have it there. It's placed there. Om Okay, it's done. Clean, turn off, will be turned on when needed. 
Moving now to the throat, throat chakra, throat chakra. So that will be also activated now. Put your palms around your throat chakra. Clearing up. Okay, now we connect the throat chakra with the higher dimension. Imagine the vortex, a wormhole connecting your throat chakra with the higher dimension. Say, I accept, I accept, I accept. Turning it off, putting it in stasis until it is needed for channeling. So you're safe, you're good. <laughs> Now let's um, put some fire in your throat. Healthy, warm energy of healing energy. It's like prana, chi. Let's send you send the prana and chi through your palms into your throat chakra to warm it up and put a seed of fire there. Plant some compassion, see, and, and service. The idea of compassion and service. The fire is fueled up by the idea of compassion and service. Compassion and service. Done. Done with that. Now, what do we do next? We thank, we gratitude, we send the gratitude. Angelics, 
Thank you, Angelics, for your help. Send the Divine Mother the gratitude. Say thank you, thank you, Divine Mother. Thank you, the Earth, the Earth energy. We, see, we do some final cleaning touches, we remove the extras, we remove the work um, materials, the, the junk, and we clean, leave the clean space for future work. Connect in a few seconds. Relax, stay healed, stay happy, stay in a positive mood. Keep that positive charge, and you can keep on that keep that connection for a long time. So keep that connection. It is a program which is up to you to keep and keep reactivating it. Keep accepting. Say I accept, I accept, I accept. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Allah, Allah. Stay in good spirit. Good night. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you guys. It's been fun. Thank you. Thank you.